welcome back to the channel. It's Adam. NAT, my favorite stock, just reported earnings. Uh, kind of a tongue-in-cheek little intro there. And we're gonna discuss what you should be doing in the oil tanker sector as a whole in this video. So stay tuned, I'm the oil tanker expert and welcome to Sanofsky Stocks. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, NAT was one of my earliest investments ever uh, after the pandemic hit. And this was my, actually my first video. I made a, a video on Nordic American tankers. And since then, it hasn't really gone to plan. However, I'm still holding this nearly two years later. It's $1.92, just under $2 per share. Uh, and I bought not at $2 per share. I bought around $5.50. We're going to go over that. Uh, and they just announced earnings, and they had a nice pop of about 12% today so far. We're going to discuss these earnings as well as whether or not I think that NAT is still a buy, as well as other alternatives to take advantage of what's happening um, across the world in terms of oil supply and oil tanker uh, market. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. So um, just for reference, they reported earnings, NAT reported earnings today. Um, actual expectation was negative 12 cents, uh, whereas the estimate was 12. So they basically... Um, were right on the money in terms of uh, analyst expectation versus actual. Uh, and then just to show you my portfolio, this is what I have. Uh, yeah, it's not really funny, but you know, here it is, 350 shares. Um, cost right now is dollar and ninety cents. My average cost was five dollars and seventy cents. So I still have a huge way to go in order to even break even. However, I also received uh, quite a bit of money, I believe over uh, so far like $300 ish worth of dividends since I've held for over two years. Uh, and this represents 4.6% of my TD portfolio in, in uh, just under that. So uh, it represents even even smaller amount right now down 66% uh, still at a loss of, of over one grand. So, you know, it's hurting. And I mean, money that I'm losing here that I could have sold and put in other profitable stocks, uh, you also have to take that kind of into account. So it's just sitting here. Sure, I'm getting uh, one cent per share. So that's $3.50 every single quarter. But I mean, that's not much. Uh, but again, I do think that we are hitting sort of an inflection point for uh, tankers anyway. So that's why I'm holding on to my shares. I think there will be brighter days to come, potentially maybe even starting with this. Uh, if you're looking at other tankers, though, in general in the market, they have been looking up. The energy sectors overall this year have been doing well uh, compared to something like the NASDAQ tech heavy index that has been faltering due to potential increases in interest rates uh, and inflation going up. And that's when the market discounts future earnings quite heavily. So tech stocks fall, energy stocks rise. And we can see that across the markets here. Year to date, okay, you know, the NAT is down only 1%, uh, despite, you know, this big rise here. However, when you look at other stocks, Frontline, this is another tanker company. It's up 20% year to date. Euronav, this is like the darling of oil tankers. It's up by 20% uh, year to date. DHT, another tanker. I believe this one also carries um, uh, clean clean sources of like clean natural gas or something like that, it's up by 10% year to date. You look at a pretty big company, it's up by 13, 14% year to date. Suncor Energy, this is one of the big players in oil production in Canada. One that I'm actually considering buying and I'll talk about that later. But again, let's first focus on NAT. So first, the energy sector is doing well, although NAT is kind of lagging behind its peers in terms of market performance year to date. Uh, and that's mainly, I think, because of mismanagement. They have a lot of debt, despite what they say. And we'll look into the report, and it's actually getting better. But they've also issued, the main reason is that they issued so many shares that it's just diluting the, the market. And they don't want to take out a lot of debt, so they're diluting shareholder value. And I mean, look what's happened over the past five years. We've seen, of course, this spike due to the pandemic before uh, NAT has been come, kind of crashing down since then the max chart not really looking any better at one point this was like a 40 dollar company in 2005 i mean since then look at that down 95 percent so um yeah i mean over the long term i don't like investing in oil in general i think clean renewable energy is the future but i do think and I've said this over and over again, that within this time frame, we're still going to need a lot of oil. Uh, and just part of my ethics, I want to kind of shy away from oil-based investments. 
but I'm not about to uh, sell when I think the market as it is at a bottom. Um, so I do I definitely have a change of heart that I want to sell my investment, but I'm not I'm not about to sell it when I think that things could turn around for the better. Um, so so yeah, let's just continue here. Let's go straight into the report. So uh, they said they're going to comment about the political events in Russia and Ukraine as they know more information. Of course, this is still early days, and my heart goes out to all uh, all the people suffering in Ukraine. Uh, over this, you know, over Russian aggression. So, um, yeah, and we'll talk a little bit more about that first, but we have to realize that, you know, there are people that are uh, perishing due to this conflict, and this is a serious situation. My heart definitely goes out to them. Um, so, again, uh, let's just go straight into the fourth quarter. So, they improved on both their top and bottom line. So, the average time chartered equivalent, which is how much people pay NAT to ship oil for them, in the fourth quarter came in at came in at $10,100 per day per ship, which was up 74% from the previous quarter of $5,800 per day. So significant improvement. That's what I like to see. That's what we've been expecting, but it just hasn't been materializing. Uh, and we'll see this right here. So um, this was the most that they ever had. This was their best revenue for the past five quarters. So we'll just, again, get rid of this. So we recorded a net loss of $21 million or an earnings per share of negative 12 cents for the fourth quarter. Uh, adjusted EBITDA was actually positive at close to 2 million. The net loss from the previous quarter was 44.6 million. So that was improvement from negative 21 to negative, from negative 44 to negative 21. Uh, so they cut their losses by more than half, which is what I like to see. Um, so they talk about their two new buildings. They bought two new ships. Uh, all of their fleet is relatively old, so it's good that they're buying new ships. Are under construction by Samsung. Uh, in South Korea are scheduled for delivery in May and June 2022. Uh, the construction of these vessels are progressing on schedule. The remaining payments to the shipyard are fully financed. So that's good to hear. They're not going under uh, at least any time uh, in the near future for those two new buildings there. On February 9th, we entered two, into two six-year contracts for two new buildings, the ones that are being built in South Korea. The accumulated TCE from these six-year contracts is in excess of $100 million. So that's really, really nice. That's what I uh, like to see. That So not only are they operating in the spot market, which is the day-to-day -day fluctuations in their contracts for their ships, they're also operating under long-term contracts, these six-year contracts, uh, which provide a steady revenue stream. So again, I like seeing this. Uh, a company controlled by the Sul Sultanate of Oman, uh, I actually wasn't sure where that is, so I looked it up, and it's a country in the Middle East right here, bordering Yemen and uh, UAE um, and Saudi Arabia. So uh, that's where it is. If you know, I'm just curious, so want to see that. Uh, and asset values continue on a firm note. So they basically sold Nordic Mistral after the transaction. Our fleet counts 23 units. This is the second vessel we have sold since we announced such plans in July 28th. The aggregate proceeds will mention the sale of about $30 million have been used to pay down debt. So during 2021, they focused on paying down debt, which I think was an incredibly good move, especially since interest rates are rising. I actually don't know what the fixed costs of their interest rates are. Um, so they paid down debt of $56 million, uh, and they have issued shares most likely to also pay down their debt slash finance their vessels that are not doing or that have not done well in 2021. NAT has one of the lowest debt levels among publicly listed tanker companies. I actually haven't fact-checked this, but I assume it's re relatively true here. Uh, the company's net debt per de uh, for December 31st is $245.3 million, or $11.1 million per vessel. Um, and I, I guess that's a decent, like, that's pretty good. Our gross loan-to-value ratio is currently 49%. This provides a company with fi financial uh, flexibility. So that's about half uh, loan to value. So uh, let's say for every two dollars that they have in in asset value, they own one dollar uh, to to the bank basically in terms of loan. So you know our objective is to become debt free. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. So global oil demand is nearing pre pandemic levels. Uh, oil production is increasing slowly but surely. We expect the tanker market will gradually improve during the year. They already said this in their previous like five quarter results. Um, so, you know, I'm unsure, especially with the crisis, but I think the Ukraine-Russia crisis will actually increase the spot rates for oil tankers. We expect the tanker market will gradually improve uh, and then hit an inflection point 
uh, with global oil inventories at critically low levels now, this could happen sooner than later. So the whole world is trying to transition away from gas. However, we still see a significant or significant reliance in gas, especially since there's increased demand uh, for, for gas products, um, especially as the world is coming out of, of COVID. So the cash dividend is one cent per share. <laughs> this is our 98th consecutive quarterly dividend payout. Uh, so they basically also issued share to pay these issued shares to pay these uh, dividend payouts. Um, so, oh, and here's the full report here. Uh, as an attachment if you want to check it out. But basically that's kind of what I wanted to go over, just you know these, these main points and what my thoughts are. Uh, and again, they haven't had um, these time charted equivalent rates of $10,100, which still makes them in the negative uh, for, for over five quarters. So over a year and a quarter. So this is a significant improvement in basically their position. And that's why uh, the stock uh, is, has been shot up by about 12% today. Um, and I just wanted to also find out a little bit more information about their um, partnership with this, this the CEO Asiad of Shipping and Dry Dock Service said. So our business, this is what the CEO of NAT, Hergeborn Hansen, my man, said. Our business is expanding in the Middle East, which is an important area for our operations. We regard this operation um, as a substantial step forward to cementing and building our position in this area. This may only be the beginning. So uh, I guess this is you know pretty interesting. And the other NAT ships trading in the spot market will reap the benefits on that front as the market improves. So I think this is a pretty good way to go forward kind of risk management is not only have ships operating in the spot day-to-day -day fluctuations of the market, but also have these uh, long-term contracts. So I think that's a pretty good move. Um, and now let's talk about the financial prospects and future directions of NAT. I firmly believe that this company will increase in price over the next couple of years, mainly because I still think as we move away from the reliance of oil, we'll need a significant amount of oil to be shipped back and forth. And there's always going to be, you know, financial kind of um, uh, conflicts around the world. And I mean, especially if you're looking at the 16... A six-month trend here. This was a dollar and forty-one cents per share. It's up by thirty-six percent uh, since then. I unfortunately don't have really any more dry powder to spend on NAT, uh, just because I mean I've already lost so much money, uh, and I'm just kind of gonna be waiting it out. But I mean that's a pretty decent gain, and I think this is the turn uh, of NAT. I think share price for the foreseeable future. I don't know if it'll ever reach five dollars a share. It might not. But when it uh, is close to what I deem uh, to be decent for me to go out, I will pull out of NAT uh, and never invest basically in oil ever again. Um, but speaking of, I think that the current crisis here represents uh, an, uh, potentially a way to invest in NAT and other oil tankers with the long-term kind of game in mind, uh, especially because, for example, what happens when, you know, uh, Germany halts the North Sea 2 pipeline in response to Russia? Okay, so this is a land, um, uh, a land pipe that's bringing oil from Russia into Germany, right? And so without that, they need to get oil somehow. Uh, so while they're building their own reliance on oil, uh, what could happen is there's going to be increased need for transportation of oil using uh, ships like Nordic American tankers, right? Because they're not getting it through these pipelines. Um, so also supply could be disrupted around the world. And to compensate for that, oil tankers might need to ship excess oil to these countries. Uh, and Biden sanctions company building Russia's Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So this is the stuff that I'm talking about here that could have a positive effect even on the NAT share price. So sanctions on Russia oil and gas would mean higher energy prices uh, all over the world. And again, what this means here is, or at least how I'm reading it, is, um, is we will need, there will be increased demand for oil tanker ships that are transporting oil to these much needed ports that are being basically cut off from uh, Russian exports. So uh, again, I think that this could be a significant opp opportunities. We've seen oil at significant levels that we've never seen before, basically over $100 per barrel. Uh, we'll, I think we'll see increased need to ship these and therefore increased spot rates and increased profitability for oil tankers like NAT. Uh, and another option 
would be to invest in companies like Suncor Energy. I believe that energy, I mean, again, energy has been doing well. Uh, for example, this company, Suncor, in Canada is up 13% year to date. You look at the oil prices, they're basically nearing um, like five, I think even 10 year highs. And I mean, you look at the past one year, uh, Suncor is up by 49%. This is not true with a lot of tech names like Coinbase, even Facebook, um, that are not up by... 40% over the past year. However, I still think there's a significant way to go. If you're looking at Suncor Energy over the past five years, it's down by 9%, okay? Um, so uh, despite this rise from its lows, I think 2022 could be a pretty damn good year for oil and uh, energy companies in general, uh, especially with this crisis going on. And I mean, again, as oil continues to go above $100 per barrel, um, and this is only maybe this, the start of the conflict. We could see a potential decline in state of affairs and oil going even more um, uh, above $120 per bale. I read some analysts saying that oil would go to $180 per bale by the end of the year. We could see, of course, Suncor's profitability goes way up. So, uh, you know, again, that's another possibility if you don't want to invest in the oil tanker market. And this is also a pretty established company with a pretty decent dividend of 4.5%-ish. Uh, so those are my thoughts. And just for fun, here's uh, NAT in the news undergoing a lightering operation, which is basically transferring cargo from one ship to another to make another ship lighter so that they can dock basically in a port. Uh, I don't know why they have this on their website. I just thought, you know, FYI, if you want to know what that is, this is what it is. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the conflict. Uh, again, my heart goes out to all of the people in Ukraine. It's a pretty uh, serious situation there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm from Slovakia, which well, borders Ukraine. Um, so, so also slightly concerned for my family back there. Anyways, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you can subscribe to the channel, check out my links down below. Uh, for example, to my free Discord and support me on Patreon if you enjoy my content. But or or just you know, um, there's also a way to join my membership on YouTube. So feel free to check those out. As always, love you all. Um, let me know what you're doing also with NAT or energy prices. Uh, and if you disagree with any of my opinions, please leave a comment down below. Anyways, peace out. Talk to all of you later. Uh, stay safe out there. And yeah.